back here to it. Like a lot of old women. Put some weight into it, or you'll feel it on your back. Now come on, Lynch. Come on, Lynch, you know better than that. Get him off your knees there. Come on now. Get up there. Mr. Evans! There's no call for that. What, Mr. Harvey? The ground is too hard. They can't plough it. And no amount of beating will alter that. Master's orders, sir. Then I'll talk to him. Aye. Do that, sir. Meanwhile, put them on other duties. Come on. Smiling, is it, Mr. Finn? Never, Mr. Evans. We all know that that's a crime here. All right, drop it. I want that field plowed, Mr. Harvey. It isn't possible, sir, until we have some rain. Now, I'll be the judge of what's possible. We need extra crops this year. It's a waste to have land lying idle. At least, sir, the plowshares should be honed and sharp. Then attend to it. Put the farrier to work. Mr. Harvey. You're right to be concerned about the machinery. I appreciate it. What news in the Sydney Gazette, my dear? Mr. Robert Campbell is building houses in Chapel Row for lease or sale. Any word of those escaped convicts from Castle Hill? They've been recaptured. Committed for trial before the judge advocate. Trying to make their way to the other side of the mountains. Well, they'll never learn. We improved. No one can cross those mountains. Secure the well, jailer, and inform the hangman who'll be needed before the week's out. Listen to this. Says Governor King, I'll fix the core, make them humble, make them poor. I'll crush the blighters and cause a rout, but not today, I've got the gout. <laughs> so fair, my love. So unjust. Scurrilous. Another attempt to assassinate my character and overthrow my authority. You must put a stop to it. If I could find who is responsible. If your Lieutenant Hobby gave one to Mr. Wentworth, I dare say they all found their way to Major Johnson. Not enough to have the scum of the British Army, but now I have as my commander the squire of Annandale. Don't excite yourself, King. Your go. You must go. Yes? Your Excellency? Come on. Well, I expect you've seen these attacks upon me. I come upon a more pressing matter, sir. What could be more pressing than these infamies? I intend to court-martial anyone found with them in their possession. As you wish, sir. I'm here to acquaint you with rumors of treason. Treason, Major, comes in many guises. The convicts we caught were questioned. There's talk of revolt. Since we first came here, there's been talk of revolt. Have you evidence? Rumors, sir, that's all. But there is a smell of rebellion. The Irish again. I believe so. It seems to center upon Toon Gabby in Castle Hill. Better inform Abbott and the garrison of Parramatta. And the settlers along the Hawkesbury. No need to alarm them that they shall be on their guard. Mannion, too, up there on the Nepean. Yes, sir. As you can see, Major, no sign of rebellion here. I don't stand for it. So I've heard. I'm obliged to His Excellency for his concern. He has so many other problems that beset him. Thank you, ma'am. But I have business in Green Hills, and I'd like to be back at Annandale by morning. May I compliment you on your beautiful home, Mrs. Mannion? I hear it ranks only with yours, sir. My regards to your lady. 
I shall convey your sentiments. Get... My dear Connor. What is it, Stephen? His lady, as you call her, is a convict by whom he has numerous children. An ex-convict, surely. Therefore a free woman. That's as maybe, but they cohabit without the benefit of marriage. Isn't that common practice among officers and settlers? Housekeepers. I believe that's the term. Hardly a fitting matter for discussion. Ellen, check the stores we require. The wagon will be leaving shortly. Yes, sir. As for Johnston, he's an opportunist who's used his rank to advance himself. If I were to be discourteous to everyone who has done that, would there be anyone to talk to? Mr. Harvey! Find out the extent of this unrest in Parramatta. And I'll give you a list of the people to see. Unrest, he said. And that red coat major. Faith, I tell you, things are stirring. <laughs> Much good it'll do us. If the crop is rise, they'll free us all. You're talking like that book they took from you years ago. <laughs> Want stripes to match their mothers on your back, Finn. And what do you want? Any of you? To be left alone. To serve your life chained like a dog. And then six feet of earth. No woman to love. No child. Not to be free ever again. You dream of that? Maybe. A man don't have dreams. What else has he got? Finn, sir. It was him doing the talking. Hard as it ran. We'll deal with it when Evans gets back. I'd say there's no cause for alarm. Major Johnson sees revolution every time a convict fails to touch his forelock. I'll tell Mr. Mannion, sir. <laughs> Since he's Irish, you best not tell him my opinion of them. Far from overpowering the military, they couldn't capture the orphanage. Go to the courthouse, have a word to Mr. Marston. Yeah, I have an appointment with him. The Reverend Samuel. He'll tell you. Get him going. Come on now, boy. Righto, buggy, rusty. Snow, Jerry. James Pierce. Mary Riley, Nathaniel Hart, you have been found guilty of the charges against you. Have you anything to say? Commit thy works unto the Lord. Deliver us, O Lord, from the evil men and from the hands of the offender. Preserve us from their desires. Let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into deep pits that they rise not up again. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name, and the upright will dwell in thy presence. Pierce, for insulting your employer, a flogging of fifty lashes. Riley, for concubinage and licentious behavior, your head will be shaved, and you will wear an iron collar for Heart. For seditious utterances against the person of His Majesty, a hundred lashes and confinement for two years. Take them out. We'll hear the cases for common debt after lunch. Mr. Harvey. Reverend. A busy morning. Spares of these wretches. We'll take a glass together. You can tell me the news of Beltrasna. Bring a glass for Mr. Harvey. And Mrs. Mannion. Not yet blessed with another child. Uh, no, sir. Ah, pity. A young woman of such pleasing appearance. One would have hoped that the good Lord. <laughs> and Patrick, 
Not of him. He's uh, 21 now, finished his studies. I believe his father does not want him to return to the colony. I can sympathize. So much has gone wrong here. The governor, such a disappointment. <laughs> but loggerheads with everyone. Now he's allowed an exiled Roman priest to perform a Catholic service. Can you imagine that? Uh, about the unrest, Your Reverence. I protested. I shall continue to protest. It's an abdication, sir, to the kingdom of Satan, if the papers gain a foothold here. You are a Protestant, Halby. Uh, yes. It's a matter of vigilance, young man. Eternal vigilance. As to the other business, there are motives of discontent. But rebellion, it's unthinkable. Tell Mr. Manny on that. Get up, come on, pull back there, Buggy. Pull back, Rusty. No, oh, pull up there. Get up, get up. Pull back there, Buggy. Pull back, pull back, pull back. You'd better sleep it off before pull we get there, home, Rusty. Mr. Evans. You have a jar or two, sir. Truly generous of you. Pull back. Get up, get up. Oh, pull along, Buggy. We don't want to upset the master, do we? Pull back. For me, Mr. Harvey. A trifle, ma'am. I thought you might enjoy it. Captain Tench came with the First Fleet. Uh, there's much of interest about Governor Philip and the hardships they endured. I shall treasure it. Mr. Harvey, there are two boxes of provisions missing. I told it, Honor. I checked them off at the store. You are in charge, Mr. Harvey. I shall have to hold you responsible. Yes, sir. As for these reports from Parramatta, I'm not entirely convinced. We'll take certain precautions. I want one of the convicts isolated. From now on, he'll work alone under guard. Who, sir? Finn. What have I done? Master's orders. Inside. Stephen, has he committed some offence? Not at the table, my dear. You must allow me to be the judge of these matters. Careful. She's young, Ellen. Give her time. We'll take coffee in the drawing room. Yes, ma'am. Will you not tell me why Finn has been confined? Because he incites trouble. It's no punishment. Just a protective measure for all our safety. No punishment to be locked up alone. Forgive me, ma'am. It's not a matter I can comment on. Natives must be chopped up with an axe, sir. Well, we lost one some days ago. Stay with him, Mr. Evans. Help with the timber. I want this repaired as soon as possible. Into it now. Are uh, we doing a grand job there, Boyo? You speed it up, you get a nip when you finish.
can arrest you, indolent bastard. Finn! Finn! Oh, my God! I want him back, Mr. Harvey. Shoot if you must, but bring him back. Now, tell me again where you were when this convict swam away. Yet in timber, Your Honor, see? When I turned round, he'd gone. <laughs> Prentice. Cut. God almighty. Cut. Johnny Prentice. No, Mum. But he'll be caught, I reckon. No one's ever escaped from here. sign at all? None. We'll head back to the river. <laughs> Johnny Prentice, Miss Ellen's son. That's Mannion's axe. And his stores. You busted his landing. And stole his cows. <laughs> it, it's wonderful. It's a miracle. City fair and bright, where first his breath he drew. Twas there they christened him the brave and bold Jack Donahue. So come along, me hearties, we'll range the mountainside. Together we will plunder, and together we will ride. Further searches will be made for the escaped felon, though I expect he will starve or be killed by the natives. I meanwhile, requisition another convict from my workforce. Finish that and I'll sign it later. We'll scout along the valleys, we'll gallop all the plains, we'll scorn to live in slavery, bound down with iron chains. So, come along, the valleys, we'll bring the mountainside together. Yeah. 
Mr. Byrne! Make them stop! They don't have the plot. All of them, sir? He's free, and they know it. Perhaps you can't comment, Mr. Harvey, but I feel like singing, too. Yes, ma'am. So do I. I'm sorry, but we can't spare troops to hunt convicts. Guard or won't, Captain. There's unrest. There have been more incidents, guns and ammunition stolen, a great deal of talk. Doing about it. Listening. Talk's cheap, but the wind it raises wouldn't blow out a candle. Good day to you, sir. He taught me to write. Oh, it's a fine thing you've done for him, Johnny. And for me, I'm thinking, how far are we from Parramatta? Two days. You ever go there? Any time. Would you go there for me, Johnny? I can't risk it, but I've got to find out if it's true, if they're going to rise. Where and when? Not alone. The whole of the colony is with us. We'll take Parramatta. We'll march on Sydney Town and plant the tree of freedom! <laughs> and then a ship, lads. A ship home. Are you with us? Yeah! Then it's death or liberty! Revolution, sir. Castle Hill and Tomb Gabby. And they're claiming Parramatta has fallen. Issue a proclamation of martial law, postcards in the town, and find Major Johnson. Yes, sir. All those without passes to be apprehended. Travel by land or water between here and Parramatta to cease. Mercy on us, King. What's to do? The convicts have risen, ma'am. We don't know the extent of it yet. Johnson's company is to march by dawn. Yes, sir. Troops will fire if attacked. Any rebel who lays down his arms will be granted amnesty. Sir, tend to it, Mr. Kemp. As hope reason prevails. It's rebellion! The croppies are on the march. Thousands of them! Sir Harvey, muster the convicts. Have them locked in their cells. Bring the guns to the house. What is it? Rebellion. Call the servants and secure all the windows. I knew this day would come. Where are they? All the thousands. Where's Holt's men and you and the others? Two of them and two of us, if they want to parley. Listen to me. This is madness. Submit and His Excellency has promised you mercy. We know his mercy. Your forces are scattered. Many have surrendered. It's a lie. Be sensible. Avoid bloodshed. For the last time, give up your arms and submit. Save your sermons and to hell with you. We want liberty. Death or liberty! It's a trap! Fire! <laughs> 
Treacherous double dealing bastard! Charge them! Fire! Good! Now! Fire! Hold your position! Stand on the gully! Go on! Stand on the gully! Stand on the gully! Deliver us from our enemies, O oh Lord. Defend us from them that rise up against us. Deliver us from the workers of iniquity. And save us from bloody men. O oh Lord, God of hosts, be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been our defense and our refuge in the day of our trouble. I've commended you in my dispatches to Lord Hobart. Pray we'll have no more trouble from that quarter. I doubt it, sir. Eight of their leaders are swinging from ropes in case they need reminding. Good health, Your Excellency. If there be more of all the promises have been kept. But they ran away, and the soldiers just shut them and... Death or liberty. Fine, proud words. We will not live to hear them said again. It was ill-led and fully organized. They could try again. For that reason, I think you should move to Sydney for the present, until the situation is more stable. If you agree. Whatever you say, Stephen. I shall be very happy here. Just until we're sure that this business has died down. We are, after all, so isolated out there. Indeed we are. And it will be a pleasant change. I simply meant the social life and the sea air. Right. Uh, the lease with Mr. Campbell includes a servant, until we find someone suitable. Leave that to me. I'd prefer that you had a companion. We'll see. You must allow me to make some decisions. I shall miss you, Connor. But it is only temporary, of course. Of course. And you'll be comfortable at Beltrasna with Ellen.
Goodbye, Connor. I'll visit when I can. Au revoir, Stevie. Attend to the dinner, Mary. Is the most distressful country that ever yet was seen. I never thought I'd enjoy using a hammer that belonged to Mannion. Get some seed the next time you go to Green Hills. Oh, not a farm life. A farm. Put down some onions in March. Peas and beans in May. Some fruit trees. Yeah. Hey, how could we get hold of some fruit trees? <laughs> Mr. Harvey. Sir? What the devil, Mr. Harvey, is the meaning of that? <laughs> hey. He'll be bellowing like a carry bull. You really hate him, don't you, Johnny? Yes, I hate him. Uh, it's a strange old world. Him with all that money and power. And herself. Soft as an Irish morning. Who's herself? Someone who was halfway kind to me. Mm. He deserved better. Emily, this is Mrs. Mannion. We don't know Emily's other name. She was found about seven years ago, and she's been at the orphanage ever since. Oh, she's clean, and I do believe well mannered. What do you think, my dear? Would you like to stay here with me, Emily? Oh, yes, Mom. Oh, please. Drifting along. Deliberately slow, sir. I'll mold the buggers. No, you won't. Hold your respect, sir. The master wants this thing finished tonight. Are you blind as well as stupid, Mr. Byrne? They can't move any faster because of those shackles. Oh, best tell his lordship then, hadn't you? Some trouble, Mr. Harvey. Well, himself thinks the men can't work for the encumbrance of the chains, sir. All right, Byrne. Carry on with your duties. 
Mr. Harvey. There's a good reason for the change, Mr. Harvey. I simply felt they could work better if yes, they Yes, I dare say. And if we were not so remote, I would consider it. But out here, <laughs> 20 convicts and only two overseers, surely you can see the danger. Yes, but if they were treated... Your concern is noted, Mr. Harvey, but there are women in the house. Even our own safety would be at risk. I'm afraid we have no option. Stupid! Clean that in the scullery. Take it out. Can't I trust you to do anything right? These girls, worse than useless. The master was looking for you, sir. Please don't seem to tally, Mr. Harvey. Corn and oatmeal stocks. Well, surely they should be higher. Uh, no, sir. Why not? I increased the convict's rations, sir. You did what? Increased them. Uh, that accounts for the discrepancy. Without informing me? Uh, you were away, visiting Mrs. Mannion. But I have been back for some days. You did intend to inform me. No, sir. Do you mind telling me why not? You'd have reduced it, and the men are hungry. <laughs> they told you that? I observed it. Anyone could. That's an odd thing to say, Mr. Harvey. Do you think I would knowingly underfeed my labourers? I think so. You'd feed your cattle better. You've taken leave of your senses. Oblige me, Mr. Harvey, by remembering that I employ you. I no longer wish to continue in that employment. I beg your pardon? I'm a tutor, sir, without pupils. Oh, don't talk nonsense. It was always understood that you'd carry out other duties. Your salary is adequate, even generous, and you've been treated with every consideration in my household. Now, calm yourself. I'll try to forget that you've spoken in this manner. The work is distasteful to me. Distasteful? I'm not a jailer. I'm not an overseer of convicts. And I won't stand any longer the daily cruelty and brutality. Men driven, half-starved and overworked just for the benefit of your... of your pocket. You are insane, Mr. Harvey. And you are dismissed? No, sir. I leave of my own will. Then you had better leave this colony altogether, for be sure my account of you will not advance your interests. You're ungrateful, insolent, and a fool. I shall make it known that you are not to be trusted. I'll be off my property as soon as possible. What is it, Mark? I told them, you don't kill the sheep. You take the fleece off it every year, and the obliging beast grows you another. <laughs> Gentlemen, excuse me. I'll see you at the inn. My dear Mrs. Andrews. Captain MacArthur? Oh, Captain, no longer. His Majesty has graciously permitted me to resign my commission and return as a private citizen. And your journey, sir? Passable, ma'am. Though I can hardly complain, as I made the voyage in my own ship. The Argo? The vessel that lies in the harbour yours? The Argo, indeed. Aptly named. Jason sailing home to Corinth with the Golden Fleece. You know your mythology, ma'am. And Mr. Mannion, is he in town? No, occupied with affairs at Beltrasna, but I mustn't delay you. We shall meet soon, I trust. It's a pleasure to be back, dear lady. The air is like wine. Is that the famous Captain MacArthur, ma'am? Indeed it is. His own ship, that'll cause some heartburn. Whaling vessel, I believe, of some 400 tons. Um, he plans to trade in sandalwood with the Pacific Islands. And Lord Camden has granted him 5,000 acres of land. <laughs> and 30 convicts assigned as shepherds. So, Jack Bodice returns in triumph after all. The governor had no choice but to be most civil to him. Sir, I hear that Mr. Harvey has left your employ. Some time ago. He proved to be unsatisfactory. Excuse me, gentlemen. He doesn't speak of Mrs. Mannion. 
She's still in Sydney. There's talk that they're estranged. Easy, Mom, now you've showed me. Small stitches, that's the secret. Very nice, Emily. Make some tea, Mum. I fear my boots are wet. I'll draw a chair to the fire. Such weather to be out. I began to wonder if you'd return to England since I'd had no word of you, and you didn't choose to visit me. Do please come and warm yourself. Thank you. Why didn't you visit me? Oh, I wanted to. Many times. Yet you were hurrying past. Did you not know I lived here? Oh, yes, I knew. But, uh, whether a visit would be welcome, that I didn't know. The, uh, the circumstances in which I left Beltrasna. I was distressed to learn of it. Intensely so. Mr. Mannion has made it known that I'm not... Whatever he may say, I don't believe. I mean, I feel sure that, uh, that you would not act in anything but an honorable way, despite what's been said. If you believe that, then what has been said no longer matters. Cake, Mom. And the tea won't be but a moment. Emily loves it when we have company. You, uh, you entertain often? Enough. The governor and Mrs. King have been most hospitable. And uh, where do you live? In Pitts Row, ma'am. I have lodgings. Comfortable? Well enough. And your new post, are you satisfied with it? I've not as yet secured another post. But it's been... Three months. Here we are, Mom. Nice and hot. Uh, thank you, Emily. Shall I look up, sir? Yes. That's all. Good night, Ellen. I've been thinking, ma'am. Thinking what, Mr. Harvey? That I, uh... <laughs> Come, sir, you were about to impart some great thought to me. Yes, ma'am, but I was just distracted. Let's begin again. And pray don't worry, Mr. Harvey. Emily is an admirable companion. And it's far too lovely a day to worry about gossips. You were thinking? That rather than look for a position, I should adopt a different course. You have me in suspense, sir. Mr. Mark Harvey begs to acquaint parents that he is desirous of receiving pupils for tuition in arithmetic, calligraphy, French, and the grammar of the English tongue. Mr. Harvey, having the benefit of a classical education, will also offer classes in Latin and Greek. A school. A small academy. Academy, indeed. That sounds much grander. But this is marvelous. You approve? Is my approval so important? You know it is. I want to interrupt you, Kate. You have, my dear. Oh, pray spare us one moment from the business of government. Uh, Mrs. Mannion has been talking to me. Then I wish she'd talk to me. A pretty woman is just the tonic I need. 
Your Excellency flatters me. Mrs. Mannion has had the most splendid idea. Pray tell me, ma'am. It occurred to me, sir, that now the colony is growing, we would benefit by establishing a school, a small academy. You've often said yourself, King, it's all we lack. And by chance, Mr. Harvey, who was in my husband's employ, has the notion for just such a venture. He was presented once, a most pleasant young man. Extremely pleasant, sir, and very sound qualifications. So I understand Mr. Mannion wasn't entirely satisfied with him. By disagreement, sir. Nothing more. I assure you, Mr. Harvey is most reputable. Ah, quite. All he lacks is your encouragement. And uh, suitable premises. It seems worthy of support. Perhaps you'd send him to see me, if you should happen to run into him. Mr. Harvey, Reverend Marsden. I hear you're starting a place of learning. Yes, sir. I pray you don't neglect religious instruction. Teach them their Bible, sir. The word of God, Mr. Harvey, is sorely needed here. <clears throat> Good day, and good luck to you. Thank you. Yes, I made them sit up, those elderly monuments in the House of Lords. Told them of land, great tracts of it beyond their wildest dreams. Land to the mountains, hand over it when we find a way. It was tried and failed two years ago. My dear fellow, we can move mountains. I convinced them and supply England with wheat and wool. They're aware at last. This needn't be just a prison colony. What else could it ever be? The granary of the empire. My wife saw Mrs. Mannion in Sydney last week. She seems in fine health. Yes, she finds the sea air agreeable. Met that young fellow. Never could remember his name. Harvey, that's it. He was there. Down here. I want to show you my merino ram. It's perfect. A small building in the rocks near the harbour. I am glad. You may go home, Emily. Mr. Harvey and I will follow shortly. Yes, ma'am. No chaperone. Oh, poor Emily, to sit while we converse. <laughs> it's no hardship to her. She admires you greatly. I want her to have a chance in life. Would you teach her to read and write? Gladly. You'd call every day to see the lessons carried out? Every day. Perhaps every other day. I'd be content with that, though only half as content. Perhaps Emily will prove such a good pupil that she'll only require tuition once a week. Oh, I do hope not. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite spot here. I wonder if things will change. Change? Mrs. King told me today the governor's been recalled. Not resigned? No, they didn't give him that choice. In view of the unfortunate differences, between you and the military officers of the colony, your commission to govern is no longer in the best interests. How soon will we leave? As quickly as we can. This place has been a graveyard for governors. Let's see what they make of Captain Bly. My dear. What's happening, Stephen? We're leaving just as soon as you're ready. Emily, wait in the kitchen. Leaving for where? Well, Trasner. It is, after all, your home. And the girl can come as your personal maid. Am I to have no choice in the matter? Choice, I don't believe, comes into it. You are still my wife. And as such, your choice of company leaves a great deal to be desired. I have business to attend. I'll expect you changed and ready to leave in an hour. 